Hey guys, this is Craig Tate with Modders Inc., aka Tech Daddy. Uh, the 2015, yes, 2015 winner of the Staff vs. Staff QuakeCon 2015 mod off. What did I win it with and how did I build it? Right there, folks. Watch this video and find out. I'll give you a tour of how I did it, what I used to build it how much it costs to build. It's a lot cheaper than you think. Mod on folks. So the first thing you want to do whenever you have your case is you want to pick out the colors that you want to start painting your case as well as start tearing your case down because it's going to make it much easier if you tear your case apart. Actually pull out all the components so that the paint can land where it needs to as well as having uh, some of the unique pieces already accessible. Here I'm uh, starting to plan out some of the outer cuts on my mod and I'm starting, I'm laying down some styrene right here to make a uh, artificial tear that I'll end up painting later, fiberglassing and uh, making it look more realistic. But the styrene works perfectly because when you heat it, it bends and curls almost naturally. Uh, here I'm uh, trying to plot out how an alien hand would look if it would have swatted the bottom of the case and actually cut into the bottom of it. So there's three fingers that got pushed up through the bottom of the metal from a really hard alien hit. And that's going to play into what this is. This is the base, and the base is going to be uh, I'm going to be building up doom flesh on top of it, and to make the undulation of the doom flesh, I put cotton balls down and lay it out in piles to make it to where it's like poking through the bottom covers uh, of that uh, case. There you saw me laying down some cotton yarn uh, to make veins, uh, and then I just put resin on top of it, and I put down a coat of primer just to see how bad it looked and what I needed to up and then I went back over with more resin. Then I start laying down color coats on the other pieces while the resin is drying. And uh, that's actually a dry piece right there. It looks wet, but it's dry. And that's because I was basically almost pouring the resin onto it so that the resin filled in all the spots and made it look smoother. Uh, made the undulations uh, more natural. This one here was that tear that I was showing you earlier. Uh, and I put some resin on that. This is the doom flesh on the bottom. This is me painting it. I start off with a uh, cardinal red, then I come back over with a cinnamon brown, and I, I do it unevenly so that it looks like there's like bloody pockets of flesh, and then there's veins and stuff underneath it. Here's the frame with the military green on it. Uh, there's the side panel. There you can see the styrene that I cut into it and uh, how it's gotten to this point. Now what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and paint the doom flesh that's already that green color. So I use this liquid uh, masking and I paint it into the crevices of the bottom of the doom flesh and then I mask it out and I cover up what I don't want that red and tan stuff on. Then I give this side panel kind of the same treatment. There you can see the final product. I did silver on the inside of the tear by spraying silver paint from the back side of the hole and spraying it forward and outward so that it only got on the insides of the tear. Building out the uh, control rods now. Uh, they were too wide to fit inside the, uh, the PVC piping so I had to actually file them down as you can see right there and then I had to figure out where I was going to put the holes inside the PVC pipe so I put it up to the back of the tear and cut them out and then put the, uh, the sanded feet um, plasma rods inside the PVC pipe and the effect came out beautifully. And then I painted the pipes uh, actually a graphite black and then uh, took a, a silver paint pen and went along the edges of that graphite where the tear, where the brakes were at in order to make the uh, the pipe look more metallic. Here you can see me uh, doing a, uh, a spin, kind of a 360 view of the dead mod. Uh, the actual flame effects were real. Uh, I took the panel and hit it with a blowtorch in order to get that black scarring. The UAC logos that you see on the back underneath the meshing is actually a UAC uh, logo that was cut out of uh, vinyl. 
and then weeded to where the logo was there. That's the positive of the, of the logo. And then I put it on top of the magnetically attached um, fan grills that fit on the back of that case. The UAC logo that you see in this window right here uh, is actually a negative of a uh, uh, of the logo that was cut out of vinyl and I laid it on the back of the window. No, I laid it on the front of the window. I think it's on the front of the window. And then I took uh, uh, paint, frosting paint. I sprayed it down and then while the, as the paint was starting to tack up, I pulled that vinyl logo off and it left what looks like a etched UAC logo. Uh, there you can see the burns in the window. That's supposed to look like uh, like that. Uh, either frag grenade shrapnel or possibly trace around or super hot lead that pierced the outside and there you can see the system board that took damage on the inside of the dead. Uh, so I, I kind of left this this work portion of the video in so that you could see better what the uh, what the what the smoke scarring and the shrapnel and the damage on the case actually looks like. So, you guys know the story of the dead. It's it's a it's a unknown piece of technology that was found after the Hell Wars, and uh, this is the condition it was in: the front, the sides, the bottom, the back's a little bit scratched up. But, you know, Presumably, the, the, the back didn't see much damage, but the side of it, you know, some shrapnel damage, some bullet holes, and, and uh, some flame out. There's a, another one of the magnetically attached UAC logos from the inside because it's on side. It's it's on one of the magnetic filters. That front panel is actually a piece of uh, acrylic. Uh, I did acrylic, and then I painted graphite black on the back of it. Um, and then I took the blowtorch to the front of it and a pair of needle nose pliers and I pushed those bullet hole indentions that you saw into it. And then after I did that, uh, to give the bullet hole center indention uh, a little more punch and a little more pop, I took that same silver paint pen that I was using to outline the pipe and I just put it right in the middle where the pliers pushed down into, the, into that dent, and uh, the felt tip of that uh, paint pen left just the right randomization of silver to make it look like a bullet strike. So if you ever want to make bullet strikes and you only have acrylic, there you go. That's the way to do it. That's some close-up of the uh, system board that I pulled out of a non-working laptop, and I, uh, I hit it with a blowtorch to get that burned effect, and uh, word of warning. If you're going to use a blowtorch and do that, wear goggles because the capacitors don't like to be superheated. And I had that dang thing blow up on the side of my face. I took shrapnel damage while I was doing this. So it got really dangerous there. It's like, it's like having a firecracker about six to eight inches from your face, except that's like metal and electrolytic fluid that's flying around. Superheated electrolytic fluid. That's an EVGA classified uh, heat sink off of, I think it's an old, was it uh, X, was an X55? Uh, I remember, I'm sorry. Um, this is just showing off how the final case came together. Uh, there's another of the, the vinyl of the UAC logo. It's on the magnetically attached um, fan filter that's on the bottom side of the case. Um, Thermal Tape did a great job with those. I love the fact that those are so easily removable, but are so secure once you once you get them in place. Uh, the Doom Flesh only covered part of one side of it. It's supposed to look like it's been sitting on that piece of ground that you see it on right there, on that little, uh, that little piece of red wood, if you remember earlier, that was covered in cotton balls, then fiberglass, and then covered in resin, and then sprayed with the multi-stages of paint. I did the side panel, instead of making it smooth, I used a brush to kind of tack it up a little bit as the 
uh, as the fiberglass resin started to tack up because I wanted to make it look like the pores of the skin, you know, like you know, hair pores, follicles, stuff like that. You know, it wasn't, it, it was like new skin that was expanding over uh, that, that particular piece of technology that had been sitting on the ground for so long. The veins are showing, you know, the ground is basically moving up and trying to engulf the, the, the technology. There's a, like I was talking about before, the bullet strikes on the acrylic. I pushed them in with a moving nose pliers and then used a silver paint pen in the middle of the depression in order to make the effect of the bullet strike. Uh, used uh, silver from the same paint pen to put on the edges for some of the scuffs that you see, and then took a dry brush and just pulled them back to make them look like, you know, uh, abrasions and marks and stuff like that. Underneath, you can see the, it looks like the, the skin is dripping off of the, uh, of the dead mod. The bottom's been torn open from where the, the, uh, demon looks like it, it hit it with an uppercut. And, you know, his finger, remember the demon's fingers went through the bottom of the mod, and you're going to see here in a minute where the holes in the mesh actually coincide with lumps in the bottom of the, uh, the Doom Flesh base. They're actually, it's, it's like the ground has grown up underneath the computer and it's trying to grow into it through the finger holes that were knocked into it. That's what you're going to see right there is those where the finger strikes came in and, and the ground is trying to grow up into uh, the device, but it hasn't been able to take over the inside of it yet. Probably due to some sort of radiation that we don't understand. But. You know, there you go. There's some more of the uh, of the of the holes which I used. Uh, I basically pounded holes into it and then took the same blowtorch and created the smoke and the blistering effects uh, on that side panel window. And there's some more of the close-ups of the bullet strikes up front. It was a fun mod to build, and um, it was. From, from an expense standpoint, it was actually very inexpensive. Our rule of thumb is keep it below two. Is it keep it below two hundred? Yeah, I think it's less than two hundred dollars. Uh, and I know I didn't get anywhere near that. So, hope you enjoyed it.